Good morning. How good morning. are you? I'm good. Thank Great. you. Great. We're excited today because Victoria is victorious today. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. You How look are you? Beautiful. So do you. Great. Well, good morning, Rafai. How are you? Hi, Oji. Good morning. How are you? Happy Friday. Hi, happy Friday. You're looking radiant. Thank you. Well, good morning to you, viewers. That's always right. <laughs> Here are some of the highlights of what's trending across the globe. As we gear up for the annual International Women's Day. Facebook has announced a book launch on African leaders, and it features two Nigerians, Tara Bella Durotorie, founder of House of Tara, and Temi Giwa Tobulsun, founder of LifeBank Nigeria. And in the UK, the Duchess of Sussex tops the trend again after Buckingham Palace announced that it will investigate allegations that she bullied several staff members and drove out two personal assistants from Kensington Palace. And in the US, Kim Kardashian is reportedly set to keep the 60 million Calabasas mansion she shared with rapper Kanye West and their children amid their ongoing divorce. Finally, an old video of the governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, who has been facing multiple sexual misconduct allegations, has resurfaced online where he was berating the Trump administration for poorly handling women who came forward to report cases of sexual harassment. After the Me Too movement, they did absolutely nothing when it came to sexual harassment. Uh, they have always diminished the charges of women, always, consistently, and they're doing it again to cheapen or ridicule the pain a woman suffers from a sexual attack uh, is disgusting, sexist and disgusting. Uh, to second guess how a woman should have acted after a sexual attack is sexist and disgusting. Tunju, how the cookie crumbles. I mean, it's good that he has apologized for his sexual allegation claims, but I mean, this is what he said during the Trump administration. I mean, it's quite embarrassing. Well, it serves him perfectly right. And this is the problem with judgmental people. By the same measure you it, used to judge others, so shall it be done to you. This exactly. is extremely embarrassing on every level. I'm cringing for him. <laughs> and the fact of the matter is, sexual harassment has nothing to do with partisanship. They're creeps and lechers on both sides of the aisle, and they should all be embarrassed. They should be ashamed of themselves. You cannot be more correct. Well, <laughs> let's begin in Nigeria. That's in uh, Professor right. <laughs> Wa's voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll begin in Nigeria, where reports are reaching us that about 100 officers and soldiers of the Nigerian army have deserted their duty post around Mate in Borno State over lack of weapons to fight Boko Haram. The troops who recaptured the town after the chief of army staff, General Ibrahim Atahiru, last month, gave them a 48-hour ultimatum to recover communities and enclaves held by Boko Haram insurgents, were reported to have complained about lack of equipment and had requested for reinforcement from the authorities, but were turned down. It is gathered that the troops learned that insurgents were going to launch another attack and, in protest, deserted their post. Over to you, Dr. Abati. Well, I mean, uh, this happens all the time. Uh, soldiers uh, deserting their duty posts, uh, soldiers going a wall on their commander, and it's very embarrassing. But oftentimes, when this had happened in the past here in Nigeria, in the course of this war against uh, terrorism, the argument has always been the lack of equipment. Uh, bandits having more sophisticated equipment, uh, weapons than uh, our own soldiers, and in the past, uh, those soldiers have been court martialed uh, because, uh, you know, valor is uh, the uh, main attribute of a soldier. Uh, cowardice is not considered uh, part of it. And a soldier deserting the battlefront, uh, you know, will be sanctioned for it. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, the contest is that when uh, General Ibrahim Atayuru assumed duties as chief of army staff, one of his first assignments was to meet with the troops uh, the Operation Lafayette Dole, uh, where he had himself been a commander in the past. And he gave them marching orders that they should uh, uh, re, uh, reoccupy, you know, or take back, repossess uh, Mate, which had been taken over by uh, the uh, terrorists, Mate, Dikwa, and a number of, uh, of communities. And he told them that he would provide support and that they could be 
rest assured that they will have the necessary equipment and that their welfare will be looked into, including uh, the problem of uh, war fatigue. Some of them have been on the battlefront for a very long time. Now, in this case now, they went ahead, they carried out the order of the, uh, of the uh, uh, chief of army staff. They, they took back uh, Mate. Uh, but the story says that after that, nothing happened. They didn't see any quick action on the part of the chief of army staff. So the chief of army staff should take this as an indication, as a form of reaction on the part of uh, these soldiers that have deserted uh, the force. 101 of them. I mean, that must be the largest size of uh, desertion uh, that we have seen so far, including, you know, senior officers, senior soldiers. Uh, there are privates, there are sergeants, if you look at the list. So the list that uh, the uh, Operation Lafayette Dole Command has issued uh, is uh, a kind of directive. If you have seen it, you know, I, I think uh, one or two, uh, uh, you know, uh, sites on the social media put it out. And it's been circulating yes, I've seen all so. over the place. You know, you have the names, 101. You have their bank accounts. And you have specific instructions that if any of these persons are found, they should be apprehended yes. and returned to headquarters. And you know, of course, that the implication of that is that if any one of them is apprehended, uh, then they will be caught martialed, right. uh, according to uh, military law. Rufai, only last month we were celebrating um, the recapture of Mate, and now we hear the story. Okay, but there's been a response, I'm just seeing now, by the Army, okay. that uh, 101 soldiers didn't desert Mate and Dekwa war zones. Uh, but that's a response by the Army. But ongoing, but what, what is really pertinent, and why I'm surprised that, that we keep having this talk about weapons, is the fact that we invest a lot in weapons. When you look at it, when you look at from 1960 to about now, defense spending has grown from about 0 0.2 billion U.S. dollars to about... 1.6 in 2018 it was about 2 billion US dollars to about 1.6 or 1.8 billion dollars that it is so that's to show you that defense spending has consistently increased in this country and when we are spending that sizable amount on defense you wonder why are we not getting effective weapons to be able to prosecute the war the very most important thing that uh, Tahiru, uh general Tahiru did say when he when he came in was about the welfare and the morale of the soldiers. So is it a case of welfare, or is it a case of we don't just have weapons? We've got, you know, a lot of people that are asking these questions consistently. I am not sure that our adversaries are spending close to $2 billion, and I'm talking about the insurgents on defense, $2 billion, no. So if we have that defense spending in a sizable portion of our budget, then what is happening? Why is it that we cannot get weapons? The next phase for me will be, can we get to a point where we can start to, you know, have research schemes to individually develop our weapons in this country? It's so easy to go buy from countries like Pakistan and the likes. When are we going to get to a point where we can make airplanes ourselves rather than go churn out $20, $30 million to buy these fighter jets from Pakistan? Because when you look at countries like Pakistan, the JF air jet that we're buying from Pakistan and some other countries, they developed it too with independent research and projects. So when is DICOM going to get to the point that we can effectively feed our army weapons? My third point will be, do we now say that the likes of Major General Adeni deserves an apology? Because that man was treated very badly. Because a video leaked that on the battlefield, he complained tremendously that there were no weapons to fight. And that video leaked that he said he went against the doctrine of the army and the likes, and that man was demoted. This question keeps repeating, but the army has responded to it by saying that nobody deserted the army. That's the response of the army, just for the balancing out of all of this. Well, if you may read that out, I've checked the Twitter account of the Nigerian army, and I hope this response is not after a fashion. Yeah. The, the tweet reads, members of the general public are please advised to disregard the story as the subversive intent of the promoters are targeted are dampening the morale and fighting efficiency of our troops. We continually solicit, especially, the much-needed public support in the fight against uh, Boko Haram terrorists, and is dated 4th March uh, 2021. So what is the source that of what exactly. is in circulation? Thank you very much. If you see what is in circulation, <laughs> there is a, uh, a statement on each of the pages saying that, look, the uh, circulation or publication of this particular document 
uh, is covered under the Official Secrets Act 1962, which means, you know, it's supposed to be a secret. So is it the uh, Nigerian Army now uh, activating that clause that they put on every page to say this is the official, uh, this is covered by the Official Secrets Act of 1962? So these are questions, but we just hope uh, that uh, the position that they have put out now uh, is the correct position, and that we will not hear stories later that certain uh, you know, officers have been caught martial. Uh, but after a fashion, the Nigerian army has consistently denied reports of this. Nature. Fortunately, you are unable to take uh, other stories yes. because of this but issue I'll of national importance. Have a great weekend. Thank I'll see you, you guys much. next week.